Assalamualaikum and hi. So today our group will present about the bullet train or also known as the Shinkansen. Our group name is the Transporter. Here is our, our group mate. Assalamualaikum. My name is Muhammad Hakim bin Norafizan. Assalamualaikum. My name is Muhammad Dem Iskandar bin Hiladuddin. Hello, my name is Muhammad Kamal Fudail bin Muhammad Rahim. My name is Muhammad Kamal Hakim bin Hamdan. Assalamualaikum sir, my name is Muhammad Fakrul Akmal bin Muhammad Features of a bullet train What is the feature of a bullet train? Well, bullet train is a high speed type of rail that can go more faster than the traditional trains. It can go above 250 km per hour and it is using the traction motors as a brake which generate electricity. And as an alternative, they switch to friction braking if there is no place to store the electricity. This type of train can also run on conventional tracks that is similar to conventional gauge system but built with stronger material. Have two synchronous engines and mostly these trains operate on their dedicated tracks but also can run on conventional tracks but at a moderate speed. On each Shinkansen lines, there are fast trains, semi-fast train, and local trains. The fast trains only stop at the main station. Semi-fast trains make a few more stops, and local trains stop at every station. The engineers structured the bullet train by applying an aerody aerodynamic design and upgraded to a modern design. The shape of the bullet train, that is aerodynamic, influence the stabilization of the train due of the speed increase, crosswind stability decrease. There are three types of seats in a bullet train, or in another word, Shinkansen. That is, the first one is non-reserved seats, second, reserved seats, and third, green car seats. I am going to explain to you about costs. Infrastructure costs can be divided into construction costs and maintenance costs. Both of them are relatively independent on the volume of the traffic and instead can be calculated as dependent of the line length. Just multiplying the number of kilometers by an average unit cost. Construction costs spread out over the construction period whereas the maintenance takes place during the operating period. Formally, the structure cost can be, denote, can be denoted as this formula, where we, have where we have additionally assumed that construction costs also include a surcharge to take into account planning costs. The actual values of the average cost per kilometer have been estimated from the values. In particular, to err on the side of precaution, we did not consider just one value, but three, the lowest unit cost in the database, the highest unit cost in the database, and the average value in the database. A final element to take into account in the previous calculations is the residual value of the infrastructure at t equal to 40. This amount, once discounted to t equal to 0, reduces the total cost of the infrastructure. In general, since there are different assets with different useful lives and depreciation rates, it is quite difficult to provide an accurate value of the residual value. To simplify calculations, we will just assume that it will be equal to 30% of the total construction cost for each particular scenario. Thus, for the reference case in the best scenario, with a total building cost of 990 euro multiplied by 5 years equal to 5,950 million euros, the residual value at t equal to 40 is 1,485 million euros. The corresponding residual values for the medium and worst scenarios would be 2,700 euros and 5,850 million euros respectively. Next is the inventor of bullet train. 
He is Hideo Shima. He was born on 20 May 1901 and passed away on 18 March 1998. He studied at Tokyo Imperial University and majored in Mechanical Engineering. In 1925, he decided to join Japanese government railway. At there, he worked as steam locomotive designer. He also introduced new technique, the standing driving wheels and new valve gear design. He helped design Japan's first three-cylinder locomotive. In 1945, there is an incident happened. There is Hachiko Line derailment. 184 people were killed and 495 people were injured. Japanese government railway see this as an opportunity and take this opportunity to obtain permission from SCAP for the purpose of modified all wooden passenger cars into a steel construction. Uh, Hideoshima involved in design and development C62 and D62 train. At this time, it was turning point for Hideoshima. In 1948, he was, prom he was promoted to be the head of the National Railways Rolling Stock Department. In 1951, a train caught in a fire at Yokohama Station. More than 100 people were killed. As the head of the National Railways Rolling Stock Department, he has to take the responsibility. He decided to resign uh, from his position as it was one of the Japanese traditions. In 1955, Shinji Shogo asked him to come back at J Japanese National Railway. From there, they built the first Shinkansen, that is the Tokaido Shinkansen. And it was the first successful Shinkansen to be built in the world. Unit train is using a technology that is called maglev that stands for magnetic levitation that will give the levitation effect which this magnet is placed on the train and the concrete guideways to interact each other to give the magnetic levitation effect. It needs to operate by cooling down the superconducting electromagnet to less than 450 degrees Fahrenheit to support the magnetic levitation effect to give 10 times stronger power than normal magnet and it needs such as aluminium and conductive material to create and generate enough magnetic field power to move and hover the train. There are three important specific interval tasks which is first, to create a field that can make the train hover 5 inches above from the guideway. Second, to make the train stable horizontally on the guideway, which it need both side magnet repulsion on the guideway to make sure it's stable and it need high magnetic resistance which it need more further to the center and closer to the bottom. Third, the set of the loop has the propulsion system that run by alternating current power. This is for make the train has the alternating current power to make the train keep moving along the guideway by place the north pole magnet facing out in the front and south pole outward at the back for make the train pull forward from front and behind. Passenger will experience safety and comfortable journey with this train as it has low friction because the train is hover on the air and only the air is the train will touch and has the guideway that will keep the train from any derailment that caused by inertia that will cause any accident and crash. This train is conduct by computer for its routing and speed that the computer is managed by human far from the train. That means this train has no human conductor on the train. And this means that this train will be very efficient and on the future it can be flexible transportation. And next I'm going to present to you about the benefits of the bullet train that it will bring to the country. Firstly, it will create more job opportunity. It is because by building this high speed rail, it will generate thousands of jobs in the industry as it will consume a lot of time and manpower to build the bullet train. Consequently, by building this high-speed rail, it will generate thousands of jobs. Next, it will reduce congestion. The bullet train can accommodate to 1,300 people in one trip. Also, with the speed of 310 mph, by doing so, it will surely reduce the congestion and traffic jam. 
then it can boost the productivity in economy. As we all know, transportation is one of the sectors that will bring positive result in terms of economic growth, resource, employment, and other aspects, especially with the existence of the bullet train in our country. Not to forget, it will be the main attraction for the tourists who comes to our country, and surely we will gain a profit from it. Last but not least, it can minimize the uses of private cars on the road. There are a lot of bad effects if people still continue using their private cars, as it can create air pollution and many other consequences to the environment as well. Subsequently, the high-speed rail also could help positioning themselves with the region and within the global community if everyone is using it in the first place.